Hi, I'm Roy Shaw with Roy on Rescue. Uh, I had a student uh, email in another question in regards to shock. What is shock? How do you treat shock? Um, though I think I covered it a little bit in a, um, a video blog earlier about what happens if a person passes out, which is kind of one of the signs and symptoms. I didn't get really in depth on shock, so I'm going to go ahead and, and delve into that a little bit. I think it's a useful topic, and I think it's one that we can revisit. But um, there's lots of reasons why people go into shock. And remember, there's a very important lesson here. Shock is the failure of the body to circulate oxygenated blood for whatever reason. That's a really fundamental definition because there are so many things that can cause shock, either reversible shock or irreversible shock. But then when you get into like the types of shock, it goes on and on and on. If you ever go to like a medical dictionary and look up shock, get ready to bring a cup of coffee with you because there's a ton of different definitions. There's, there's um spinal cord shock and anaphylactic shock and hypovolemic shock and cardiogenic shock and spinal shock and it goes on and on and on. But in the end, it really is whatever causes the body to stop circulating oxygenated blood for a moment or for a long time. If that happens and is not corrected, the body will die because it needs oxygen to survive. So are there are some things that we can do to try to reverse the symptoms of shock or stop the shock process uh, while we're waiting for emergency medical services. One of those things is obviously to recognize shock. So the signs and symptoms with shock are usually a decreased level of consciousness, nervousness, thirst, shivering, pale, cool, sweaty. They might have an altered mental status and then unconsciousness. The treatments for shock, um, I had this individual had mentioned that in their first aid book at home, it was telling them to put the shock patient into a recovery position. Now remember the recovery position is kind of a, maybe like a fetal position where you roll the, the victim or the patient on their side, you brace their leg up so they don't roll over all the way into their face and occlude their breathing. And this is actually a, pos a position for a non-neck or back injured patient who is unconscious and we have to leave them to go get help. This recovery position is actually meant to keep the tongue forward and to the side so that it does not occlude the airway, and then if they vomit or have bleeding from the nose or mouth, it flows out onto the ground with gravity assisting. That's what the recovery position is for. It's great for diabetic coma. It's great for postictal seizure patients, which means a seizure patient that's recovering from a seizure um, while we get help. But a, um, a shock patient is, now it can be as simple as somebody stands up too quickly, their blood pressure drops because they're dehydrated, or their blood sugar is low for a moment, and they go unconscious. The biggest problem there is what they're going to hit on the way down, so we've got to watch that. But the major reasons that people go into shock are primarily more from bleeding that's not controlled, internal or external, as well as cardiogenic shock or spinal shock. Sometimes also anaphylactic shock, which is in a severe allergic reaction. In first aid, the way we would treat those primary causes of shock is to, to lay the person flat and elevate the legs above the heart. This draws the blood from the, the lower limbs of the body and brings it back to the core from brain to pelvis, which is going to encompass most of the major organs and help keep this person alive. Secondly, if they have major bleeding externally, we're going to use direct pressure to stop that bleeding. We need them to, con to hold on to their blood so they can circulate oxygenated blood. Thirdly, if they have a spinal cord injury, we're going to minimize movement. That's what's going to help not aggravate a spinal cord injury and then also help them with their airway, breathing, and circulation. Um, and fourth, anaphylactic reaction. Unless you have an EpiPen and some Benadryl, there's not a whole lot you can do except for call 911. But it is always wise that if the person has had an allergic reaction in a close call or had to go to the hospital because they were stung by a bee or had a peanut allergy, make sure that they have an EpiPen with them at all times maybe multiple EpiPens, they know how to use it, and make sure that you've got some liquid Benadryl on hand so that you can reverse the effects. But the major first aid treatment for shock is calming the patient down, reassuring them that they're in good hands and that help is on the way, activate 911, lay the person flat, elevate the legs, keep them warm with a shirt, coat, blanket, or anything that can help them retain their body temperature and wait for EMS to arrive. If they stop breathing or lose their pulse, you know what to do because you're a rescuer. You know how to start CPR. So from Roy on Rescue, I hope this was helpful. Have a great day.